Morning everybody and thank you for joining me again. Now, before we start, <laughs> you've probably noticed that there are now advertisements at the beginning of my video. Well, the thing you need to know is it's not my doing. My channel is not monetized, it never has been and it never will be because I don't want advertisements in my videos but it would appear that I've now got them <laughs> and I've tried all sorts but I can't get shut of them now apparently YouTube in their wisdom have started putting advertisements in lots of people's videos uh, and there's just nothing I can do about it so I can only apologize if you don't like the advertisements skip over them if you do like the advertisements watch them anyway I'm back in the same field, the grass is the same, <laughs> the soil conditions are the same, but I'm still convinced that my theory about the driven shoot being held in this field is correct. Now if you don't know what a driven shoot was, let me explain. The landed gentry would have been invited here by the landowner to go on a shoot, pheasants, partridges, etc. They would have turned up with all their servants and their footmen they would have set picnic tables up along that far edge of the field there and a line of guns would have been set up at this side of the field probably about 20 or 30 meters away from the edge of the wood now in the wood where all the game were the beaters would be slowly driving the game towards the edge of the field quietly at first but the closer they got to the edge of the field the more noise the beaters would start to make to drive the birds out of the field with obvious results anyway that's my theory so let's continue and see if we can find anything else decent in this field okie dokie oops oh, get away <laughs> catch you all later right then everybody this is the first find of the day just here uh, only about four or five inches deep as you can see the soil is still as dry as a bone and extremely hard to dig but it's a strange little find and I like strange little finds <laughs> it's a number eight <laughs> and I think by the looks of the pins on the back it could be something to do with the military because it was obviously some kind of badge at one time of some description I'm not entirely sure but I'll have to do some research on that and uh, maybe you can get your thinking caps on as well okie dokie right it's a nice little first find and I'm very happy with it right we'll put pop it into the box and away we go right my good friends looks like we might possibly have another nice little find down here just there uh, as you can see only about three inches deep I can only assume that this field was ploughed at some time because normally a find like this would be considerably deeper uh, I think it could be some sort of token maybe a gaming piece I don't know whether there are any markings although I think there might be some markings on it uh, but we'll have to wait until I clean it up uh, to get a better look. But there's the little doohickey in question. So we'll pop it in the bag and we'll get a bit further. Well, <laughs> this is a bit bizarre. <laughs> I've just found another number eight. That's the one that I found ten minutes ago. And that's another one that I've just dug up. Once again, well, maybe a bit deeper this one, maybe about five inches deep. Uh, but huh, it's another number eight. Same kind of arrangement on the back with the pins, holes, call them what you will. But anyway, I'm not bothered. It's another nice little find. Right, we'll pop it away and we'll plod on. Right, my good friends, looks as though we've got the first coin of the day. Uh, nothing to shout about. Uh, probably about four, maybe five inches deep, that's all. Came up at 72 on the ID scale. Looks like a 
Victorian half penny. May be able to get something off it, not quite sure. Anyway, there we are my good friends. What looks like a Victorian half penny. Right, we'll pop it in the boxy thing and uh, fill the hole, check it and we'll crack on. Well, my good friends, uh, not exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> uh, it's a doorknob or cupboard knob, only about four or five inches deep. But there you go. I suppose it's another find of some description, you know. It's got a little bit of history to it. Anyway, we'll pop it in the bag and we'll crack on. Right, my good friends, I'll quickly show you this one. It's another livery button, which just helps to prove my theory about something going off in this field apart from farming. Right, we'll pop it away and get a bit further. Well, my good friends, considering the conditions, this one is surprisingly deep. As you can see by the digging knife, it's what, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's probably 11 going on 12 inches deep. And I think right down there, I can see the edge of a spindle wall. If I can get it out. Oh, yes. <laughs> One of my favourite finds. Lovely spindle wall. Very difficult to date, could be medieval, could even be Roman. Anyway, it's an absolutely wonderful find and I'm loving it. Right, we'll pop it in the boxy thing and I'm going for a spot of lunch now. Well, more to the point, something to drink because it's 27 degrees out here and I'm melting. Right, off we go. Now then, my good friends, I've just been having my lunch at the side of this stubble field. So I thought I'd have half an hour or so in here. Uh, I've only been at it about 10 minutes. And we've got a little coin of some description. Half penny, maybe. Anyway, it's a nice little find. We'll pop it in the boxy thing and we'll see if we can find anything else. Now then. <laughs> That's enough stubble surfing for me. Because the ground conditions in the stubble field are even worse than what they are in here. So I've, I've come back in this field. Well, I've been back in it about 20 minutes or so. And I'm glad I did. Because we've got a coin down here. It's only about five inches deep. Came up at 78 on the ID scale. And we've got ourselves a nice little, what I think, is a silver shilling. It's not too old. In fact, it's good old King George. Can't quite make out the date. It's very tarnished, but I'll clean it up later. I'm sure we'll get a date off it. Anyway, there's the coin, my friends. Nice little King George V silver shilling. Looking very black, admittedly. Right. We'll pop that in the boxy thing and we'll head off in that direction over there, my friends. Right, my good friends, got a target down here. It's about eight inches deep. Came up at 72, 73 on the ID scale. Got a nice buckle. First buckle I've dug up on the last two visits. But a nice buckle, all the same. Could be 1700s, 1800s, but there we are my friends, a nice little buckle. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to detect my way back to the car because it's a long walk and if I find anything on the way, I'll let you have a look. Uh, but failing that, I'll see you all at home for the roundup because I've had enough. <laughs> it is seriously hot out here. I'm exhausted. Anyway, catch you on the next signal, or I'll catch you at home. Okay, okay. Bye for now. Well, I'm still walking back to the car, and uh, <laughs> I've got a target down here. It's about six inches deep, 
and it's another buckle almost identical to the one that I've just dug up apart from this one still got the remainder of the pin on it Ah oh well first we find two number eights and now we find two very similar buckles I'm not complaining it's a nice find right into the bag with it and we'll carry on walking to the car right let's have a look at the finds that is all the unwanted stuff I dug up the door stroke cupboard knob lots of lead a uh, little old button there that is some kind of stud attached to some leather probably from a horse's harness these two items here further support my theory about the shooting party in the field that item there I thought was a lead token but it's not it's a lead seal from a wine bottle there are some letters on the item but I can't read them properly but there's quite clearly a very fine little hole just there and one at the other side where the wire would have gone through and it would have been attached to the wine bottle to stop anyone tampering with the wine probably the servants <laughs> that is the livery button that I dug up there's nothing on that side but I managed to get a maker's name off the other side and it was made by Armfields in Birmingham and they were making livery buttons in between 1790 and 1890 so that fits the bill quite nicely as well uh, still don't know what that is haven't got a clue those are the two coins that I dug up the copper coins George III Queen Victoria the date on the Queen Victoria coin is 1872 can't get anything off that at all I can only just make the bust out that's the first buckle that I dug up that's the second one very similar uh, obviously that one's much older than that one slightly different in design but very similar nice finds anyway that is the lovely spindle wall that I dug up I've checked on the database and matched the photographs up and it is medieval now these caused me a bit of a problem it took me ages to find out what they are and as far as I can make out they are collar numbers from a policeman's uniform late Victorian very early 1900s the only thing that I can't match up are these two gaps in the number eights that one there and there's a gap in that one there for some reason that one looks older than that one I don't know why now what a policeman was doing down there in the middle of nowhere I haven't got the faintest idea that is unless there's a policeman buried in the field somewhere <laughs> I don't really know maybe he was chasing a poacher or possibly when they used to use rags as fertilizer the policeman's tunic may have been worn out and got chopped up because they were made out of wool and spread on the land as fertilizer and maybe those numbers were still attached to the tunic I don't really know but they are a little bit baffling I will admit that is the nice silver coin I dug up King George V one shilling cleaned up very nicely uh, the date on that is 1918 so it's a full silver and there's good old King George on the other side lovely little coin right my friends those are the finds but don't go away because we are now going to do the draw for the coin identification board okie dokie right then here we are on the YouTube random comment picker I've put in the URL number for the video I've filtered out duplicate users so we'll now get the comments of which there are 115 unique comments so we'll go over this side now and start the raffle and the winner is Hopius Maximus so well done my friend and thank you very much for watching the video and taking part so I will be in touch my friend uh, and we'll get it in the post right then back to the video my friends right then that concludes the business for today my friends once again well done to Keith from Hopius Maximus another good channel if you haven't watched it already 
make sure that you get over and give him a watch because he does find some wonderful stuff. And thank you to Graham for providing the prize, the coin identification board. And don't forget to give Unearthed UK Limited a watch if you need anything metal detecting related. And also, if anybody has got any theories about those little number eights and why they've got a little gap in them, please let me know or give me your thoughts. I would appreciate it. So my friends, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Thank you to all my subscribers and viewers, new and old. And I'll see you all the next time round, my friends. Bye for now.